So recently, I actually went to Carowinds, and so today I'm going to rank all the coasters there, at least the ones I got to ride. Hurler and Vortex were both closed, so I can't rank that, but I will rank all of the other ones. So, skipping the two from Camp Snoopy, because we didn't really go there since it's more of a kid's area, those would also um, rank under the top seven I have here. Starting off, Carolina Gold Rusher. Carolina Gold Rusher has two lift hills and a slightly janky, but... It gives great views of both the first drop and loop of Vortex, and it has a real nice feel to it with the enclosed sections. I really like those because the darkness gives it a little more character, and it, you know, makes up for the more shallow drops. The best part of this is what puts ahead of, like, the kitty coasters, I would say, is um, the insane head choppers. I ducked and still thought I was close. Like, I thought, I don't know, I was way too close to my head, but my brothers felt the same way when we went on it. Number six is Carolina Cyclone. This classic aerodynamics looper has really janky turns, you know, just like Carolina Gold Rusher because it's also made by aerodynamics, but not in a rough sense, I wouldn't say, for either of them. Outside of that minor detail, which is nor not negative nor positive, is an incredibly smooth coaster. The only thing not smooth is the corkscrews, but that's like that for like any coaster ever, even the smoothest coasters. What I found uh, to like avoid head banging on the corkscrews because it's very rough is just push your head against the side of the restraints based on which way the corkscrew is going so like if the corkscrew corkscrew is over to the right then you just push your head on the right side of the restraint and then you won't head bang and if it goes to the left you just push it on the left side so that's how to avoid that number five is intimidator out of the two hyper coasters i've ridden this is my favorite sorry i apologize it but it's still very basic only having really airtime hills and that's kind of the entire ride until the little finale where you're just doing some turns before hitting the brakes the best part of this is definitely the turnaround at the end well like midpoint i guess because you get a great view of afterburn in that area and you can see the giant unused parking lot and unused entrance that's just like secondary i actually randomly saw a card like doing donuts over there that's funny but I thought the trip brakes gave a better airtime. A lot of people don't like the trip brakes on it. Number four is Copperhead Strike, the most recent addition to the park. My family actually hated this coaster because of its hang time, which made them feel not secure in their seats. And, um, you know, I like hang time, so I didn't really share that feeling. So that's what puts it over the ones below it. But I thought it had some great theming and great elements. Like, I really like the circular loops, especially for hang time, because, you know, on a vertical loop, you have uh, less space at the top of the loop, but on the circular, there's more for the train to stay up there longer. Uh, I also really like the weird banana roll type thing. I don't know if that was a banana roll. It looked like kind of like one. The main reason it ranks this high, though, is unlike my family, I like hang time. But it isn't an amazing coaster, I would say. I think it's just like a good coaster. Because, you know, it, I don't know. Coming off it, like, it felt cool. It looked cool. But then coming off it, I was just like underwhelmed. I don't know. Now, number three, big shocker here, guys. Fury 325 at number three. I know, crazy. Only high on the list, number three. It would be a lot lower, but, you know, speeding down that drop and through the course is really nice. 95 miles per hour, it feels cool. It isn't actually the fastest feeling roller coaster, even though it's technically the fastest there, I think. But the views at the top are great. Fury 325 is a seemingly the most overrated coaster ever. I got standing airtime on the drop and a grand total of like three airtime hills on there. But unless you do this as your first coaster of the day, you won't be impressed. Because if you do it as your first coaster, you'll probably get more like feeling in your stomach or something. People keep saying that the turnaround thing where you're leaning to the side, like going back to the station, is the best element. But like, I just don't know why. I did like going into the entrance though. I thought that was cool. Now number two, Nighthawk. Now, this is the underrated coaster, I would say, and Fury's the overrated. Everybody's sleeping on this coaster. The only flaw is the corkscrews at the end being rough, but that just kind of adds character. It's, like, one of the final elements on the number one coaster I have here is just like the corkscrews at the end. Like, it's rough, but it adds character. Outside of those corkscrews, the coaster is not rough at all. It has a slight rattle, but it's very, that's just like a slight vibration you can feel on the ride, but it doesn't, like, affect it at all. It doesn't cause you to shake, there's no pain or anything, shake, there's no pain or anything. The best part of this is definitely the pretzel loop though, kind of in the middle of the ride. It's like the only element I can always feel in my stomach. No matter how many roller coasters I have, I feel that every single time and I don't know why. Finally, the best coaster in the park is Afterburn. This is a perfect coaster. It starts with a drop, then a loop, then an implement or whatever it's called in an invert. 
After that, it's a bit of a blur, but many smooth inversions up until a fake airtime hit over the station, leading you into the most whippy corkscrew you will ever do. Be careful and use my strategy I said earlier not to get too much of a headache. And finally, a helix into the brakes. Nothing bad, everything good. Best coaster I have ever ridden. Hands down, it's amazing. And it feels so fast when you're on it. Like, you go down the first drop, right when you're going up in the loop, it's just a... <laughs> like, it sounds like I get a car or something. I guess... Maybe they have, like, on-ride sound effects that I just can't tell. It just sounds like wind, but... I mean, it is themed after fighter jets, right? So, it's supposed to sound that way, I'm sure. But then, like, whenever you go into, like, one of those, like, trenches... Like, fake trenches... It's just so... Vroom, like, it's very loud. And it just makes you, like, feel like you're going so fast. It's really cool. Anyways, that's my list, guys. So, I hope you're not upset over the Fury ranking. If you've written it yourself and you think it's better, I don't know what's up. You know, you tell me in the comments or something. I don't know.